responsibilities. As soon as we put it in the game, we talked about we have a, we have a point here, we have players here, here, here. As soon as we put it in the game, did the players understand? Right? How often does that happen in our games of rugby? We, we do something in training, we go to a Saturday and we the match day and, and there's, there's a disconnect between the two because we actually haven't coached it right in this position here. What did I still want you to play here? Touch, Sorry, touch, play touch rugby. rugby. Play rugby. Like, let's not forget, we've got systems, but let's not forget to play. The space was out there, we've got a pod here, doesn't matter, let's get the ball wide, but we've got to call it. Good example, massive space right in front of you, but we're, we're busy thinking, let's get a pod set, let's get a pod set, we've got to get a pod set, slow ball. Actually, no, give me the ball now, bang, let's play. If we teach our players to react, read to it, signal, we, we can put structures in place. When might you use a pod system? Can I ask there yeah. a question? Because if, if we say you start from slow ball, me yeah. as a player would think we first have to get structured and get organized. Yeah. And then if even if there's space, normally yes, as a, as a player, what what was said? Yes. So of course I would have attacked space. Yeah. And get off a quick ball, because right. as a coach you said slow ball. I first want to get the structure. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So that clarity for me about what what we want to play. So I might want to put in, but I might blow a second whistle. So one whistle stops, second whistles when we play and I'll vary when that happens. So I might want really slow ball, I might want quick ball. So there's a real clarity of what we're trying okay. to coach, what we're trying to develop. But it's a good point. So, so it's looking at how do we keep our players playing rugby, but also developing the skills we want. Slow ball, let's get balls. We have somebody working with the defence there, okay. What, what was our defence organisation like there? Awesome and awesome. That, that was probably one way of looking at it. Mine was probably a bit more shambolic. But, but, but yeah, so rate yourself to one in 10. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but it's looking at, so again, as a defence coach, you might look at what, what's, our, what's our system, what's our structure, what, how we're talking, what we're organising, what we're looking at, all right? So you can spit, you're still playing rugby, so we can do the slow work over there, but that's, and then we've got to get into games, we've got to allow players to make decisions. Do we need a pod? Do we need to get set up? Is it, is it slow ball? How do we dictate when it's slow ball? So just thinking about all the, how we can put these into games. All right, and how we can control it. So how did I control that game? But the coach's head on, how did I control that game? You decided the timing. Yeah, so I decided the time. When did I generally decide the timing? When did I do it? What area of the pitch? Edges. Yeah, so I was on the outside, I blow the whistle and we set up and tried to get get a pod somewhere there because I maybe want to look at our, our attack off a wide play. What, what else did I do? What else did I do to, to condition? the questions, where's the gap, where's the... What's uh, yeah. start asking so, so we start asking players where the gap is. How did I condition the game? There's one other big condition I put in the game. What about the breakdown? Yeah, yeah. Two, two, three, four players. I can dictate how many go in. You can change that as the game goes. Two defenders in the breakdown. Play. Or we can just call two, two, two at that breakdown and three, three, three. A bit like we're staying over there. We start changing the numbers so we create space. We create disorganisation, chaos in our defence. So we've got to work harder. We've got to talk more, work quicker, more spaces to attack. So by playing simple games like this, we bring to life the controlled environment over there. We bring to life in a game where we allow the players to make lots of decisions. It becomes very game like. How much does that look like a game on a Saturday? The players running everywhere, not sure, chaos, not understanding roles. Players getting in position, right, I'm, I'm in position, I'm in position here. Where's my, where's my, oh, go balls and play, gotta go. Yeah, it, locked. It, exactly. So, so when we get a disconnect, and I was talking, I think the other day, if we get a disconnect between training and games, it's because we're, there's, there's not enough closeness to, the, to be the same. So by doing this straight away, we're creating a game-like practice that's putting the players in the position they're going to be in on a, on a game day. And, and the more we do that and have the structure behind it, it's freeze. Okay, where's our pod here? What are we learning here? Why, why are we attacking here? Where's the space here? How can we attack here? We can use the freeze, we can use the questioning, we can use the, okay, stop, look. Where are we now? Brilliant. Where's the space? Where's the space? Way out there. All right. What do you need to do better? What could you do differently to make sure that we get the ball to space? Have a call. Tango. Tango means you get the ball to space. Brilliant. Tango, tango, tango. We know the space in the white channel. Brilliant. Let's get the ball to space. So it's just to show you that you can do that, but then you can bring it into life and people start to understand roles, responsibilities, and make decisions.